Hi, my name is Dr Catherine Hughes from Crime Psych. I'm a criminal psychologist and I run a business that enables me to bring knowledge and learning to everyone, not just those who are studying at universities and colleges. And I do this by producing a range of blogs, vlogs and free online courses. I also run some slightly more in-depth courses which are both available face-to-face -face and online. You don't need any previous qualifications to learn with me and there are a range of subjects available so once you finish watching this video why not head on over to my website and see which of those interest you. This video is the second part of the analysis given a psychological analysis of Kevin Coe. Last week I explained how Coe is an American rapist who's often referred to as the South Hill Rapist. All of the rapes and sexual assaults he's suspected of being involved in are particularly violent. He'd put his thumb or fist in their mouths and he'd ask them personal questions such as if they'd ever had sex, if they liked what he was doing to them. He would use excessive force on some of the victims. He would use excessive force on the ones who didn't do that. what he asked. He'd roll up their tops and he'd fondle them and he'd enter them from the front and from behind and would often masturbate on the victims. There is no doubt, as I said last week, that he is a psychopath and he was arrested in 1981 and convicted of rape. During his trial, Coe took the stand on his own behalf. In between telling virtually his entire life story, large segments of which were absurdly exaggerated, he adamantly denied ever owning gloves, ever owning oven mitts, ever owning a stocking cap, and of course, of ever raping someone. His mother was seated in the back of the small courtroom, would smile and nod as he made his points, and occasionally admitted a loud sigh or a muffled comment when the prosecutor registered objections. Co served the entire 25 years of his sentence at Walla Walla State Penitentiary. He didn't attend any prison counselling programmes and he consistently claimed that he was innocent. Co became eligible for parole in 1992 but he never applied for it. There have been several appeals made by Co as he protests his innocent. In 1990, Washington passed the Community Protection Act and that allowed the state to indefinitely retain dangerous sexual violent predators even after their sentences had, had finished. If a person's found guilty by a jury of having a mental defect or a mental disorder that makes them likely to re-offend, offenders are then sent to the Special Commitment Centre and there they'd receive treatment for mental disorders linked to sexual deviancy. Once his prison sentence ended, Coe was transferred to McNeil Island. Once a jury had agreed that he was a violent sexual predator, he was committed to the McNeil Island indefinitely. The court papers say that he has the following disorders. Paraphilia, not otherwise specified, with non-consenting female and sadistic traits. Paedophilia, not otherwise specified, europhilia and coprophilia as well as exhibitionism. Personality disorder, not otherwise specified, with narcissistic and antisocial traits, and I will explain each of those terms next. Paraphilia is the experience of intense sexual arousal to objects, situations, fantasies, behaviours or individual. The word sadistic means that they derive pleasure from inflicting pain, suffering or the humiliation of others. Europhilia is sexual excitement that's associated with the sight or the thought of urine or urination. And coprophilia is involving sexual arousal and pleasure from faeces. He would ask the woman that he raped to either urinate or defecate on him. Exhibitionism involves exposing the genitals to become sexually excited or having a strong desire to be observed by other people during sexual activity. Narcissism involves a pattern of self-centred 
arrogant thinking and behaviour. It's a lack of empathy and consideration, a lack of consideration for other people and an excessive need for admiration. Others often describe people with narcissism as being cocky, manipulative, selfish, patronising and demanding. This way of thinking and behaving surfaces in every area of the narcissist's life, from work and friendships to family and love relationships. By definition, people with antisocial personality disorder don't follow society's norms. They're deceitful and intimidating when they're in relationships and they're inconsiderate of the rights of others. People with this type of personality may take part in criminal activity, but if they do, they're not sorry for their hurtful behaviour. They're often impulsive, reckless and sometimes violent. People with antisocial personality disorder generally don't value playing by the rules, so to speak. They take advantage of the fairness or soft-heartedness of other people and they feel indifferent towards or even contemptuous of their victims. Those who have extreme levels of antisocial personality disorder are thought of as being psychopaths. A psychiatrist would diagnose a psychopath as having an antisocial personality disorder. The term psychopath is widely used within the criminal justice setting though. Psychopathy is typically assessed using her psychopathy checklist revised. The checklist is made up of 20 items. The answers are based on a three-point scale with answers yes, no or maybe to each question. They're scored as zero, one and two for no, maybe and yes. And although there's no official score for a psychopath, scores of 30 or over are considered to be psychopaths. Coe's score on this scale is slightly below the 30 at 25.3. However, it was concluded that it was high enough to exacerbate his risk. The checklist is made up of two factors or sections. The first factor or section measures interpersonal and affective deficits. And this means that it measures our lack of fulfilment and our feelings of emptiness and dissatisfaction. This would reflect things like glibness or superficial charm and glibness is defined as being talkative in an almost smooth but insincere way. The charm that these individuals use is very shallow. There are also ideas of grandiose, an inflated sense of self-worth. These individuals see themselves as above everybody else and value their own needs above others. There are also pathological liars, these people consistently lie, even when there's no personal gain. They just lie for the sake of lying. They're also likely to con and manipulate others. They trick other people and they make them do things that they wouldn't otherwise have done. They have a lack of fulfilment and a lack of enjoyment in life. They lack a sense of remorse or guilt. They're callous and lack empathy. They're unable to recognise and feel anything of what another person might be going through. They also have a lack of responsibility. They fail to take responsibility for their own actions. Coe's Factor 1 score was 15 out of 16, meaning that he's very likely to demonstrate these traits and behaviours. The second factor measures lifestyle and antisocial deficits such as impulsivity and juvenile delinquency. This factor reflects the high levels of stimulations that psychopaths need. Psychopaths are very easily bored and they need a lot of stimulation. They often lack realistic long-term goals and they do often act impulsively and don't consider the consequences for their behaviour. They often behave in ways that are considered irresponsible. This reflects poor behavioural controls. It's reflected in childhood and they would have had behavioural problems from an early age. But Coe's Factor 2 score was only a 7.9 out of 20. But Coe does show all of the classic characteristics of a psychopath as he scores very high on Factor 1. There are a lot of articles and websites about this case. 
There's even a website which was created by Co outlining how and why he's innocent of all charges. His mother was convicted about a year after because and she was sentenced for trying to hire a hitman to kill the judge who convicted her son. There's certainly been a lot of information that I've missed out. However, I selected all that was appropriate to do a psychological analysis on. I have included all of the links in the video description. So if you do want to do any further reading about that, it's all that it's all there. Co went on to marry from his prison cell, which just shows his narcissistic tendencies. I do hope that you enjoyed watching this video and found it interesting. Thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.